In this video, I want to talk about can we turn a small urban garden or a front yard into an edible food self-sufficient paradise. Now, I know that's a big call, but my garden out the front here is only one year old. We started out the backyard around about two years ago, and this one we came in later. And we've been building out here slowly over time and getting some really good results. So I wanna share what I've been doing here. I wanna share my success and what I believe I can do to make things better and help it so you can watch along and get some good ideas, some good concepts and some things that you'd like to implement at your place because everyone's different. Now you don't need a lot of space is what people think. And one of my things, one of my passions has always been working in a small space. So let's get into it. And I wanna show you what we've got here. So we're gonna go across. So here's the front yard, the lawn. And we haven't done anything out on this council area here other than have our bags of compost for sale out here. So some cash flow. Then we have underneath here, this is a composting system with a bale garden around the outside and this is sweet potato. So we harvest these small leaves, they're edible, and then we go in and get our tubers out of there, which is really cool. And in the center is a composting worm farm system, like a windrow, there's all worms and things like that. I could probably dig my hand in there, but it's wet and miserable today, so that'll be another time. And it's just started raining on me, so I'm out in the rain, filming to get this video out to you guys to show you how possible it is. Now we've created, so what I like to do is create little mini food forest areas. And so we've started with a coffee tree, which really isn't for uh, creatures so much, but there will be sort of some insects that would hide out in there. And then we've got a grevillea here for the birds to come in and feed on there and then come and feed around the garden on other insects and things, the minor birds. Australian noisy miner like to do that. My wife has a succulent garden here at the front here, which is really, really pretty. And that helps with our sort of like other things that we like to do, our mindsets. And then we have over here two gardens that are gonna be replaced and they produce a ton of food for us. They're in underground worm farms. Uh, in two small beds and we use the vertical sections for that. Now it's been raining a lot, so we've had, we do have some issues here. But this is the thing about gardening is we don't need to fight, with, fight it, we just go with it and work with it and work with what we've got. And as you can see here, here's a basil box growing here and that's all ready to be harvested. Tons of basil in there. We just pick off these little flowers and we'll get more as we go because we don't want to seed it up yet. And then we've got tomatoes here. We've got some problems with the wet weather with tomatoes, some zucchini down the bottom here. And we've had that much rain. Look, I'll show you, this is what we got overnight. That thing is full to the brim. So I'm dealing with storms and rain at the moment, but we're still getting food out of our self-sufficient small space garden. It's big slumming slowly. It all depends what you think about being self-sufficient is your, for me, it's about getting as much food on my kitchen plate as I can as possible, fresh, healthy food. Now we've got over here a system. So this is our victory garden here, and we have lettuce, okra, spearmint. This is called Brazilian spinach, it's a water spinach climbing beans, so we've got the climbing beans, which are the snake bean variety, jalapenos. This is our little um, garlic chives, eggplants, snacksicums that we can harvest from. That one's ready to go, let's get that. And pumpkin growing up vertical. Oh, it's starting to rain, guys. This, but I'm still out here, I'm still filming. Let's keep rolling with it because I want to show you what's going on. And I do my best to get these videos in one take. Now, what we've also got here is large compost bins. So the finished compost that's over in the other one you saw gets into here. We get worms in here, which I will show you. The worms, look at that. 
all those compost worms feeding in that big bin. And then we've got sweet potato. And these may stay in here, they may come out. They may fill up that whole bin with sweet potato if we decide to let it do that. But I probably we'll bring them out, harvest that and use that. So we've got okra growing in a pot and another big worm farm is just sitting there, some strawberries, some more eggplant and another okra over here. But beautifully behind it is a nice big papaya. Now we feed the leaves to the chickens for the papaya, for their gut and different health things. And then we harvest the green papaya. There doesn't have any green papaya yet, but we harvest green papaya for curries and also for making green papaya salad and then also eating the fruit if we get to that stage. Now climbing up the tree here is a passion fruit. And then underneath the passion fruit is a dragon fruit. Now the passion fruit is actually to overtaking the dragon fruit. So we need to come through here and trim and train this a little bit better because I wanna have both. I wanna have passion fruit and I wanna have dragon fruit and the passion fruit sort of taking over. Underneath we have pots and things like that. So here's our spring onions underneath here at the back here. Going here, if we go through, you can see. So you can just place things around in pots and stuff like that as well. And spring onions aren't really open to pests. Now we're getting a lot of rain. So our potatoes in the pots are getting some problems, which uh, hopefully, you know, these things happen. So I'm really praying that we don't lose our potatoes. We've got more of like, these are cucumbers, ready to roll, and another basil box to go next. So you saw the last basil box that'll be harvested. This is our next one the growing up and then that will be done. Now in this space here, We've, in our front yard, I walk right back so you can see, because I want to show you how much food you can produce. And this is only in one year. And we are sort of culling and harvesting and removing things and growing in containers and in the ground and things are continuously moving and changing. And so here we have, we've planted in here. So along here, along the front here, these are going to be all edibles. So we're going to have more edibles along here underneath on the bottom surface, like permaculture style, mid-range, and then also up high. And we plan to put a variety of small fruit trees uh, in here and, and edibles and little bush foods and things like that to create a little bit of a native hedge. And then here, we have a guava growing here. So we just planted that the other day and that'll take over in here. We've got a pumpkin, so they're coming across from over here, some basil that we just planted pumpkin getting ready and I'm going to train it and move it out over to this part of the garden uh, over here and run it down there as sort of a ground cover along through the front and so we, we'll have pumpkin uh, as well and we haven't even shown you all of the garden yet guys this is just amazing I want to show you how possible it is and I'm only one year in you can imagine what it's going to be like when the soil gets better and everything's looking just amazing in another year. Like it's going to be something unfathomable. Now you'll see these bales around the place and I want to talk about carbon, the reason why we have carbon uh, in the garden and what you can do if you don't have the option to bale, but doing something similar. So we'll walk past our pumpkin here. We have our African marigolds, which are there to help bring it beneficial insects and also help with soil nematode for things attacking roots. And as you can see, our soil is alive. We've got mushrooms popping up from all the rain. And so we're doing the right thing. And up here, as summer comes on, more green papaya for us as we're growing on. So you can see that it's actually possible. And I'm, like I said, I'm only one year in and the Victory Garden is only maybe six weeks old, something like that, a bit over a month. And it's ready, it's really starting to get ready to pump. So we've got our sweet potatoes and we've got our potatoes over there and the pots over there for our calories. We've got our herbs, such as our parsley, our garlic chives, our mints, different things that we can harvest for leaves, beans for protein. And if you can guess what this is, guys, let me know in the comments box down below. I forget what it is, bitter gourd or something like that, I think, that I just come across, found it the other day. And so we'll even have little mini pumpkins 
coming off here. And I think it is just amazing. And you could follow this system that I have here where you build your little compost system and then you slowly scale out with some pots. You put a few underground beds in, you start planting a little mini food forest, which I've been talking about on this channel. So getting the native birds in, getting the native insects in, things like that, creating habitat, creating little bird fountains, things like this for them to come and have a shower in, getting your crops that grow well in your place in season, you can do that. Now, before we go, I'll just talk about the carbon situation because it's very important to have a nice big pile of carbon somewhere. I have bales, they look spectacular in the show, don't they? And they're soaking up water at the moment, so they're gonna be really heavy to move, but they're doing what they need to do. And unfortunately, we're getting these little mini floods all the time because of the rain, so, but look at this. Look at this mycorrhizae fungi setting in. That means that this is stuff is nearly not far off ready to go. And if it was like that, I'd be putting compost, if I was having it there, compost on top and getting ready to plant into it, which means that it'll just grow plants like absolutely crazy. Now, you can get different piles of wood chip, whatever you can get, something that breaks down fast. I'm just gonna get out of the rain, man. <laughs> That's just crazy, that rain. I don't wanna get wet. So you can break down that over time, get a big pile of it and just keep adding to it. Find it as cheap as you can, allow it out into weather, out into the rain, and then just move it around your garden over time, just using it as a cover mulch. And if you've got some compost and things lying around, add to it, got some manures and things like that lying around to it. anything that's organic, you can just keep adding to your garden and go for it from there. And with your container gardens, get some uh, liquid fertilizer, uh, for the nitrogen stuff and some potash for the flowering and you are on your way. And there's links in the description for that type of stuff uh, down there below for things that you need 10% off at Aussie Gardener if you need to get any of that stuff. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I've shown you a pretty good experience of what it can be like to create a mini food paradise in your front yard or your small space. One year old, I'm doing it, means that you can do it too and I wish you all the best with it. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments box down below. We're gonna have some more videos around here. Please check them out. There's lots of awesome stuff in the links down below, and we'll see you at the next video real soon. All right, bye for now.